Did anybody have any questions um, from the last couple weeks before we get going? No? Okay. So just a brief recap. I've been doing this at the beginning of every single one of them. I really want to make sure you guys get some of this stuff um, in. First off, don't forget we looked at this at the beginning of the study. Philippians uh, was written by Paul while imprisoned after much suffering. Watch out for others at the expense of yourself. Even if you obey, you will still have struggles. Anyone can fall away, even Paul. Do not be pulled apart by your anxiety, but present your request to God. And then Paul was content because he knew God would strengthen him to face whatever God had called him to. Okay, so we're going to actually end up, we're going to finish Philippians tonight. So if you have anything to say about Philippians, make sure you get it in tonight. We'll start off in verse 15 of chapter 4. You yourselves also know, Philippians, that at the first preaching of the gospel, after I left Macedonia, no church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving but you alone. For even at Thessalonica you sent a gift more than once for my needs. Not that I seek the gift itself, but I seek for the profit, for the profit which increases to your account. But I have received everything in full and have an, and have an, an abundance. I am amply supplied, having received from Epaphroditus what you have sent, a fragrant aroma, an acceptable sacrifice well-pleasing to God. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So let's look at this. First off, um, their support has been encouraging and made a difference. He says in 15 through 16, You yourselves also know, Philippians, that at the first preaching of the gospel after I left Macedonia, no church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving but you alone. So they, they are known for their generosity with Paul. Uh, for even in Thessalonica, you sent to give more than once for my needs. Um, so if you notice there, he says, even in Thessalonica, that seems to imply that maybe that was a situation where not a whole lot of other people were giving. Um, so, that, I mean, that's kind of, he's obviously got a history with these people. So then in verse 17, or actually I'll go to this. Uh, Paul was not afraid to praise someone for a good job. It encourages and strengthens. So a lot of times in, in, in Christianity, people think that you shouldn't give uh Encouragement. You shouldn't praise somebody for what they do because, you know, basically a super spiritual answer about how um, they need to, uh, the glory needs to go to God or they need to be humble or whatever. Okay, Shh. stop. Uh, but uh, that's not the way Paul saw it at all. In fact, the opposite is true. Usually when you encourage people, they continue to do a good job and sometimes even do a better job. So, um, and then verse 17, uh, not that I uh, seek the gift itself, but I seek for the profit which increases to your account. Now, if you remember, a lot of the false prophets, they were all about money. So it sounds like at first glance that Paul is also talking about money, but it wasn't about the money. He says, not that I seek the gift itself. The, the, the money was just a tool to Paul. He didn't seek the tool, but he saw that the tool was necessary to get the outcome. And what was the outcome? But I seek for the profit which increases to your account. So uh, they would be blessed. By, by, by blessing Paul, they themselves would be blessed. And it would be used to bless the kingdom. And Paul was blessed by them being generous. So it's really a good thing all around. Generosity is something that really positively inf influences everybody. Um, and then in verse 18, he says, uh, but I received everything in full and have an abundance. I am amply supplied, having received from Epaphroditus what you have sent, a fragrant aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. So they did more than the bare minimum. He says, I have an abundance, more than I need. I am amply supplied. I have more to draw on from storage. Uh, having received from Epaphroditus what you have sent, now, a fragrant aroma that that's conjures up, if you remember in the Old Testament, um, when an offering was presented, um, it said that the aroma would go before God. Um, so it, what he's saying here is, is he's likening, likening it to a, an offering, um, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. Okay, so then in verse 19, um, and, my, my, and my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So as we do God's work, he will provide for our needs, but not our wants. See, sometimes people think something along the lines of this. My God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. That's that's where they cut it off at. They don't read what's before it. And what's before that is you have given for the kingdom work, and you have sacrificed for the kingdom work, and God will supply your needs. 
See, as you do God's work, he will supply for you to do God's work. It's a, it's a circle. He gives you money so you can invest into the kingdom, and then he gives you more money. To, see what I mean? It's, it's like that. But some people have yanked this verse out of context to then say, my God will supply all your needs. Like, hey, don't worry about it. He's just going to supply everything. That's not the context. And actually, if you go to places like Africa, you'll see a lot of really poor Christians. Well, how come they aren't? They don't have an excess of money. See what I mean? <laughs> so once again, in context, as you do the work of God, he will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. He will enable you for what he calls you to. So sometimes he, um, sometimes God will, God will, God will do things just to bless us, but he isn't required to. That takes us to the last couple of verses, 20 through 23. Now to our God and Father be the glory and Father. I'm sorry, glory and. Now to our God and Father be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Uh, greet every saint in Christ Jesus. Uh, the brethren who are with me greet you. Excuse me. All the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's household, and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, with your spirit. So, in light of all things discussed, conflict resolution, persecution, financial support, in light of all those things, it's all for God and his kingdom. Um, now to our God and Father be the glory forever and ever. Amen. In other words, all those things that we've talked about thus far, it's all for his glory. Paul wasn't using the money to buy a new jet. But to help others. <laughs> but they were giving to Paul, and he was in prison, remember? He didn't have an excess of expenses in prison. So what was he using the money for? Well, maybe to buy a new jet, because his old one was, <laughs> was grabbed down. <laughs> well, no, he was using it for the sake of the kingdom. Right. Um, and if you read through through his letters, especially in the introductions and uh, endings of them, he, he kind of um, points out some of the things that the money was used for, uh, for instance, in 2 Corinthians. Um, okay. So, what did they say? false teachers don't pour out themselves for others while in prison. That is the difference between Paul and false teachers, is he wasn't taking money for the sake of having money. He was taking money for the sake of the kingdom. He wasn't, he wasn't doing that. Also, he was uh, pouring himself out even while in prison. Prosperity teachers, A, they don't pour themselves out. They don't, they don't empty themselves for the sake of another person's well-being. It's all about them. It's all about their glory. It's all about getting a pat on the back. Furthermore, um, uh, they wouldn't do something like that while in prison. You know, people people who are fake. You know, when they put up when they put up fronts and stuff, um, those facades usually come up pretty quick. So, so in verses twenty one through twenty two are the final farewell. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's household. And then in verse 23 is the final. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. So a final blessing. God's grace is needed to endure and resolve conflicts. Remember, he's been talking about suffering. He's been talking about enduring, uh, all that stuff. So he ends it with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit because that grace is what's needed in order to endure the conflicts. So any questions on any of that? Okay. We didn't have a whole lot to look at, but... Um, now I want to look at something that's kind of a broad uh, overview, I guess you could say, of Philippians. These are the different steps that Paul tells us to use throughout Philippians to uh, to rejoice. And that that is kind of, I guess you could say, there are steps for depression or anxiety. Okay, so the first thing he mentions is found in chapter 1, verse 4. Says, and these themes are repeated throughout the book, so I'll only give one reference for each thing, but you'll find them scattered throughout the book. One four says, always offering prayer with joy in my every prayer uh, for you all. So the first thing is focusing on the good things and being vocal about them. Uh, in fact, in two fourteen it says, do all things without grumbling or disputing. The opposite of of openly vocally uh, praising something is to openly complain about something. Notice how the ultimate, um, shh, 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 hush, hush. Notice how the ultimate um, in being upset about something is gossiping. So what's the ultimate other? Vocally praising it. So um, 
Focus on the good things and be vocal about them. Don't just keep them to yourself. Tell other people, man, I'm so thankful about this. Um, ver chapter 1, verse 6. For I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus, remembering God's promises. Another key part to, uh, to combating depression and anxiety. Chapter 1, verse 7. For it is only right for me to feel this way about you all because I have you in my heart, since both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers of grace with me. So by connecting with others. Oftentimes when you go through things, hard trials and different stuff, we try to withdraw from people. But Paul tells us exactly the opposite. We're only going to find um, the answers to those things in connection. And remember, Philippians is probably the happiest book of the whole Bible. So if you take apart the things that he says, it's clearly obvious as to what the steps are to be happy. <laughs> Chapter 1, verse 9. Uh, and, and this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in real knowledge and all discernment. So growing spiritually. If you refuse to grow as a Christian, you will not be able to, to deal with the struggles of life. It's something where struggles come by to strengthen us. And as we become strengthened, troubles come by to keep us strengthened. It's, it's a process. Mm -hmm. So that takes us to chapter 1, verse 18. Um, what then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in this I rejoice. Yes, and I will rejoice. So for every bad situation, remember the good side. Now we're going to talk more about that in just a second, so don't get carried away with that one. In chapter 2, verse 18. You too, I urge you, rejoice in the same way and share your joy with me. So share joy with others. When you're happy with something, and that kind of connects with the first point too. When, when you're when you're experiencing a victory or whatever, share it with somebody. You know, share it with them so that they can then share it with you. Like for instance, uh, I mentioned in um, last Sunday's uh, Sunday night's sermon, I mentioned about how I had struggled with pornography since I was nine, and then I mentioned how I got victory over it. Why did I mention that to brag? No, I shared my joy so that other people would have hope. So I mean, share your joy with others. So then they can can grow and they can learn and then they can have joy and then they can share with you too. Hey, what you said really mattered really mattered to me. I started f fighting it and it worked. See what I mean? Um, next thing, uh, chapter two, verse three. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind regard one another as more important than yourselves. So don't live your life for yourself. One thing that people try to do is. Um, like for the prosperity teachers do this all the time. You know, if you want to be happy, you got to get rid of people that that are bad for you out of your life and all this stuff. And you know, you got to watch out for yourself. You got to live life for yourself. It's all about you. You know, if you go through these things, what? Get rid of that negativity. Get rid of the negativity. You know, you got to do all these things to be the happier, better you. And it's all about me, 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 me. But Paul says the exact opposite. Don't live for yourself. And there's there's a certain amount of joy that you will never have if you live your life for yourself. If you are never pouring your life into others, you're you're practically asking to not enjoy life, and practically hush, and practically asking to have um, depression and anxiety. I need I need that. So then, in chapter three, verse one, it says, "Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things again is no trouble to me, and it is a safeguard for you. So rejoicing, being thankful." Um, praising God, these kinds of things. They're all kind of connected. And once again, that connects with the point on the bottom of the left side, share joy with others, and the one on the top, focus on the good things and be vocal about them. They're all very much so connected. I, I need this again. Okay. Um, then chapter 4, verse 5. Um, Let your gentle spirit be known to all uh, men. The Lord is near. So deal with things in light of eternity. The Lord is near. As you're dealing with problems, don't forget that, the, that this life is not all there is to it. You know, when you, well, the death of a loved one, for instance, that's hard. But remember that life doesn't end here. You know, when you're going through a struggle, well, remember that it doesn't end here. When you're trying to work through your finances and, and, and trying to stop spending foolishly, remember that your life doesn't end here. Teresa, stop. Uh, chapter 4, verse 8 says, finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence, and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. So control your thoughts. 
um, one of the biggest struggles that people face uh, with things like depression and anxiety is they will not control their thoughts. It goes something along the lines of this. I'm having depression, and I can't control it, which is true. A lot of times with depression and anxiety, you can't control it. But just shh, shh. But just because you face something doesn't mean you have to give up. See, you may, it may not be your, your choice to be tempted or to have depression or anxiety, but it is your choice to use that as an opportunity to just shut down and quit. See the difference? Big, oh, she's sleeping and she's she talks in her sleep. Uh, <laughs> so controlling your thoughts is absolutely so controlling your thoughts is absolutely essential uh, for um, for any kind of growth and joy. Uh, chapter four, verse nine. The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. So another thing we see, live a Christ-centered life. And then uh, in verse 13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Be content. Don't always have to be um, get something bigger and better, always in competition with everybody. Always think that you won't be happy until you get that one more thing. You know, be, excuse me, be content with what you have. The pursuit of more is just so consuming, and the more you have, the, ha the less happy you'll be. I guarantee you, go through your house and start getting rid of all the clutter, and you'll feel, you'll feel yourself get a lot freer. freer. You know, learn to be content with what you have. Don't try and get more power, more, uh, you know, more of this or more of that. Just be content with what you've got. Obviously, strive to be a better person. Strive to contribute more to the world. Strive to use your, you know, use your life for God's kingdom. But at the, at the end of the day, be content with the things you have. And then the last one here uh, is in verse 19. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. So trust in God. Whatever comes, trust in God with it. It's hard to trust in God when you're struggling with something. Hey, God, why aren't you taking away this, this problem? That's hard to trust in God during those times. Okay, so once you guys are, are finished with this, we'll go to the last part, and you'll need your piece of paper for this part. Um, yes, yes, you will. Um, I can't get up to get it for you, but um, Gracie can. <laughs> <laughs> You're stuck. Yeah. How many uh, people need a pen? I got one from the Oh, Grace, actually, I think everybody's got a pen. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. Well, then, I'm going to say I have two. <laughs> okay, everybody ready? Yeah. Okay, for this last part, and this is how we're finishing Philippians, list every bad thing going on in your life. What What is upsetting you right now in your life? This is not something you're going to share with everybody, so don't be afraid to be honest. Things that you're going through, things that you're struggling with, things that it just seems like it's all-consuming. Maybe you're really worried about it. Does it have to be a specific thing or more like a general thing? Try to be as specific as possible because it's for it's for your own sake and the next oh, part okay. we'll kind of talk about that.
guy's got a lot of bad stuff going on. <laughs> You don't? <laughs> <laughs> Take your time. Uh oh, don't do that. Is anybody still working? Everybody's done? Okay. So now, this part is very, very important. Pay attention very closely. Write down at least one good thing about it, not what might be, not the good that might come from it, but the good that is in it right now. I can give you some examples. Um, when we... Mm. When we lost um, our third child last year, that, that's a bad situation. But here are some of the good things that are, not what might come from it, but these are the good things that are. Uh, it's a further incentive for heaven because I've never gotten to meet him in person. When I get to heaven, I'll get to meet him in person. So there's an incentive. Another one, um, I learned about God in a deeper way, and I learned about how God feels about people who um, you know, um, leave the faith. It's not like God's happy to bring punishment on them. Um, I also um, I also know what other people are going through who have lost a child. Those are the good things that have come from it. And so that's what I want you to do. Write at least one good thing about those different things that are right now the good side of it. And this is a practice that you're going to want to learn pretty early on because you're going to have to repeat this a lot throughout the course of your life. Start training yourself to look for the good side of bad situations because there's always a good side. Okay, is everybody done? Okay. So uh, keep that piece of paper, and the idea there is that you learn to take your problems and the things that, that, that make you upset or worry or whatever and go through Philippians with, with those two last sheets that I gave you. The, uh, the list of 
of steps and then looking for the good part in it okay so just a few a, a few last points here before we close out the first one is that there is no yams next week we will be cleaning the park at 5 30. do not forget that <laughs> now this is the one behind the police station yes and yes we're meeting there yes we're meeting there at 5 30. if you cannot get there or you need a ride let me know can you uh, send a text yes a yes i can i can send it tuesday morning Okay. And then the second thing is the riddle of the week. What invention lets you look right through a wall? I'm concerned that that actually might be her answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any questions before I stop the...